Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Vutale Simate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Paschatyade Satarine Om Ajnana Timirandasya Kyanangyana Shalakaya Chaksurun Viletam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Juta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaisnabam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatan Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Sadvadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sivisa Kambitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sendo Dina Bandu Jagatpate Gopesa Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vindabhispare Visavano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakal Pataru Vyascha Kipashindu Vyayivacha Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavivyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Siyadvaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gauravakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Today is most auspicious day commemorating the time 5,000 years ago whereby Mother Yasoda tied Lord Krishna, his belly, with a rope to a wooden grinding mortar. And this occurred in Mahavan, Gokul. And so today we'll going to a different part or section of the Srimad Bhagavatam, not in the sequence that we were doing, which we were uh, one part of the 13th chapter, the calves and the cowherd boys stolen by Lord Brahma. So today we'll be reading from the 9th chapter entitled, Mother Yasoda Binds Lord Krishna. And today is also Diwali, so let's hear what Prabhupada says in the purport. I will just read it myself, if that is okay. Oh, text one is here. There are two texts in this section. So we can all read. Sri Sukha Uvacha Ikada Griha Dashishu 
ಯಸೋದನಂದ ಗೇಹಿಣಿ ಕರ್ಮಂತಾರ ನಿಯುಕ್ತ ನಿರ್ಮಂತ ಸ್ವಯಂ ದಧಿ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸುಖ ಉಚ ಏಕದಾಗೃಹದಾಶು ಯಶೋದನಂದಗೇಹಿಣಿ ಕರ್ಮಂತಾರ ನಿಯುಕ್ತ ನಿರ್ಮಂತ ಸ್ವಯಂ ದಧಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವರ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಓರ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ಬೈ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಯಾಂತ ಯಂತಿಯನಿ ಹಗಿತಿ ತದ್ಭಾಲ ಚರಿತ ದಾಧಿ ನಿರ್ಮಂತನೆ ಕಾಲಿ ಸ್ಮರಂತಿ ತಾನಿ ಅಗಯತ word for word meaning shishuka obacha shri sukadev goswami said ekada one day grihadashishu when all the maid servants of the household were otherwise engaged yashoda Mother Yashoda, Nandagehini, the Queen of Nanda Maharaj, Karma Antara, in other household affairs, Niyukta Sho, being engaged, Nirmamanta, churned, Swayam, personally, Dadhi, the yogurt, Yani, all such, Yani, such, Iha, in this connection, Gitani, songs, Tatbala Charitani, in which the activities of her own child were enacted cha and dadhi nirmantane while churning the yogurt kale at that time smaranti remembering tani all of them in the form of songs agayata chanted translation and purport by his divine grace shila prabhupad shila prabhupad ki jai shri sukadev goswami continued one day when mother yasoda saw that all the maid servants were engaged in other household affairs she personally began to churn the yogurt while churning she remembered the childish activities of krishna and in her own way she composed songs and enjoyed singing to herself above all those activities purport Shila Bisvana Chakravarti Thakur quoting from the Vaishnav Toshani of Shila Sanatan Goswami says that the incident of Krishna's breaking the pot of yogurt and being bound by Mother Yasoda took place on the Deepavali day or Deepa Malika even today in India This festival is generally celebrated very gorgeously in the month of Kartik by fireworks and lights especially in Mumbai and Delhi also 
It is to be understood that among all the cows of Nanda Maharaj, several of Mother Yasoda's cows ate only grasses so flavorful that the grasses would automatically flavor the milk. Mother Yasoda wanted to collect the milk from these cows, make it into yogurt, and churn it into butter personally. Since she thought that this child, Krishna, was going to the houses of neighborhood gopas and gopis to steal butter because he did not like the milk and yogurt ordinarily prepared. While churning the butter, Mother Yasoda was singing about the childhood activities of Krishna. It was firmly a custom that if one wanted to remember something constantly, he would transform it into poetry or have, it, have this done by a professional poet. It appears that Mother Yasoda did not want to forget Krishna's activities at any time. Therefore, she poeticized all of Krishna's childhood activities, such as the killing of Putana, Agasura, Sakatasura, and Trinivarta. And while churning the butter, she sang about these activities in poetical form. This should be the practice of persons eager to remain Krishna conscious 24 hours a day. This incident shows how Krishna conscious Mother Yasoda was. To stay in Krishna consciousness, we should follow such persons. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So yesterday is Diwali, which also coincides the event, which is this binding of Lord Krishna to the wooden grinding mortar with a rope by Mother Yasoda. And also, as it is Diwali today, also commemorates the pastimes of the Supreme Lord, Lord Ramachandra, when he returned to Ayodhya after the defeat and demise of Ravana, Bharata, holding the kingdom for him, and the Ayodhya Vasis, they're ready to received the Supreme Lord by these different sizes of deeps or, or lamps according to how they can uh, afford, according to their own ways. And especially they put them on top of their roofs, the homes, the houses. So this is being also celebrated all over India, a festival of lights. It's an excuse for them to lit up many firecrackers. And if you go to Delhi, it's already polluted. We stayed in Delhi for many years and the next day after Diwali, um, so much more pollution of these firecrackers. And we are doing this every day practically in the month of Kartik. We offer lamps towards their lordships and also to Yasoda Damodar. We have them over there. And also we have nice painting over there of Mother Yasoda with a rope try to bind Lord Krishna. The offering of lamp is a symbol of our love. Krishna is present within our hearts. But at the moment, he is invisible. We're not able to see him due to our anartas. So many 
misgivings, so many unwanted desires within our hearts due to the contamination of the modes of material nature, namely goodness, passion, and ignorance. Even though Krishna is there, we're not able to see Him. So, whatever endeavors or efforts we may have to offer the Supreme Lord with this lump, because it symbolizes our love. When we offer the lump towards the Supreme Lord, it's like our love is being offered. So somehow, because we are sadakas, we are trying to become a devotee. Uh, someday, we'll become a devotee. So whatever love we have, we are trying to offer to the Supreme Lord. Uh, these pastimes of the Supreme Lord, there are three types of the Supreme Lord's pastimes while He was here 5,000 years ago. There is the Balya or Komara, then Panguganda, and then Kishore. The Balya or the Kumara age, this is the sweetest. Just like the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu while he was a young boy, childhood pastimes. So, in these pastimes, the Vatsalyaras or the parental love from Mother Yasoda and Nanda Baba as well has been highlighted so much so that she was able to capture Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the Supreme Enjoyer. He is the Supreme Proprietor. He is the Supreme Master. But here, in these pastimes, Lord Krishna became subordinate. Lord Krishna became swayed. She be he became controlled by Mother Yasoda, by his devotee. Controlled in a sense that devotees cannot control Lord Krishna. No one can control Lord Krishna. But we can control Lord Krishna by our love. So bhakti is supreme amongst anything and everything in the spiritual world. It surpasses even the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Mother Yasoda's love towards Lord Krishna is so much so that somehow she was able to bind Lord Krishna, who's, who doesn't have a beginning, who doesn't have an end, who doesn't have a middle. So how can you bind some, someone who is like that? Where are you going to focus? Where, where to start? Hmm? So one day it says, Ekada. Ekada means one day. Because every day practically the elderly gopis, they will complain to Mother Yasoda, Oh, this boy of yours along with his elder brother, will come and steal our butter and yogurt. How is that? You don't have enough butter and yogurt at your place? No, Nanda Baba has 900,000 cows, 9 lakhs. And Mother Yasoda, she chose specifically these Padmaganda cows. That means their milk is so flavorful and also very fragrant, like lotus flower. And the cows themselves, there are about 100 of them. She would choose these cows specifically for their milk to be used to make butter. And yogurt, of course. Yogurt first, then butter. So how is it that my child, Krishna, will go every day and steal 
She cannot believe this. No way. I made, uh, we made in our house the best butter, the best yogurt. So the gopis, uh, Krishna will go every day not to steal the butter because the butter or the yogurt of the other elderly gopis are better than his mother's yogurt or butter. He's there because the love again. He would go and steal because of the love of the elderly gopis. So one day, Mother Yasoda decided, today I will make the yogurt and butter myself. Now this is the first time that Mother Yasoda did it or trying to do it. Because of so many cows and calves of Nanda Baba, they have practically unlimited servants, dasis, or household maid servants that will collect milk and churn the yogurt and make into butter. So this time, I want to make sure that by my hands, I will directly do it. And so Mother Yasoda, she was wearing yellow sari today. Because when you wear yellow collar and you want to perform some activities, uh, it makes your activity or activities perfect. Yellow means purity as well when you do it in that way. And she is the queen of Nanda Maharaj. How would the queen do it? Uh, she doesn't have to do all of these household chores. And it happened early in the morning before sunrise. She decided that I will do it while my baby Krishna is still asleep, sleeping. And that way I will not be disturbed and I will be able to do this perfectly. So on that day, early in the morning, she decided uh, to perform this task. And she started with boiling some milk in a pan. But suddenly, somehow, Krishna woke up earlier also than before. And now, as the baby, the first thing that the baby will do is that look for the mother. And usually Mother Yasoda will be on his side. But this time, mm -mm, Mother Yasoda is not there. So he started to become astonished. He, he becomes surprised. I am hungry. And usually when the baby woke up, usually he will ask for the milk from the mother. So he started to cry. Actually, in these past times, from the beginning to end, Krishna is crying. This is, a, this, this is the only pastime that Krishna is crying from the beginning till the end. So, but this cry also that uh, Krishna, um, he wanted to show also to Mother Yasoda. This cry is not so much of a genuine cry. It's what he called uh, crocodile tears. You ever heard of that before? In America, we have that crocodile tears. You know, a baby would like to get the attention of Papa and Mama. So the tears will not fall off. It's right there, right there, right there in the very end of the eyes. So he saw Mother Yasoda churning butter with the uh, rod. This is how you do in Vrindavan to make, to make uh, butter or ghee. So when he saw Mother Yasoda, he went towards her. And then she, he got hold, he got hold of the 
churning rod. He started to cry. I am hungry. Please give me, give me milk. Mother Yisola could understood that uh, she understood that, okay, it's time to feed my baby. So, and uh, she was also uh, smiling. Oh, what a clever boy. He got hold of the churning rod and he put one of his legs to the, uh, that wooden grinding um, or where the, the uh, yogurt is being churned and he stepped towards the lap of Mother Yasoda. So, you see, while Mother Yasoda was doing this, she was, as it says here in the poor port, uh, she was singing, she was reciting the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. This is how they do it in Vrindavan. They will compose songs from the different pastimes or the activities that Lord Krishna performed. And so he's still young here, very young, but he already killed Putana. He already killed Trinivarta. He already killed Sakatasura. Hmm? And all these different demons. But later on, uh, some other time, the, the devotees or the Brajabhasis will compose more, more and more songs. So now, it says that while Mother Yasoda was doing this churning, the bangles also are making some sounds. Jung, 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 jung. They were so happy to be part of serving Lord Krishna through Mother Yasoda. And the earrings also are going back and forth, back and forth. They were so happy. And even the malaki flowers, instead of being tied on the head of Mother Yasoda, the hair, they were all scattered on the ground because they're offering their obeisances unto the lotus feet of Mother Yasoda. So now, Mother Yasoda, she acknowledge that oh my baby wants to eat uh, wants to drink more and more milk so even the milk coming from mother yasoda there is a competition between lord krishna and the milk because krishna can can suck more and more and more milk from the breast of mother yasoda and the milk is overflowing keep keep going 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 so now at that time the milk, which is in the pan, started to boil. See, everything in the spiritual world is fully conscious. Even the milk, even the bangles, even the malaki flower, everything. Brajaraj, the trees, Kalpaviksha trees, the animals. So even the milk is fully conscious. That he was thinking, what is this? I'm performing austerity, being heated up with fire. It's an austerity for the milk to do that. Um, but Mother Yasoda is feeding too much Krishna. So what is the use of my life? I better commit suicide. I better go jump out of the pan. Because there's no use for me if Krishna... Is already satisfied, and there is no use for me. Um, no use for my life. So she remembered, Mother Yasoda remembered immediately that, uh oh, I have this milk being boiled. Immediately she put Krishna aside and she ran quickly to save the milk. Because the milk is going to be used ultimately for Krishna's sweetmeats. To make rasgula, gulab jamun, malai, sandesh, and all these things. So now Krishna says, what is this? I am not satisfied yet. Why did she put me down? This is not proper. 
Why did she do this to me? Now, I'm going to make something for her to get her attention more. I will not spare anything anywhere in this house. So he decided to go to a room where the storage of, of uh, yogurt. Well, he chose the yogurt from the day before, stale yogurt. And he found this pestle or pestle. It's like a big stone they use for um, making or grinding spices. So he was very careful. He saw they were all hanging with ropes and the rafters and the roof of this storehouse. He is very expert of this because he, he, he will do this every day to the elderly Gopi's house. So he just, just want to make sure that he will not make a sound because if he made a sound, then Mother Yasoda will find out. So he did, he picked it up and he, boom, go ahead and boom, no sound, soundless. He wanted to be sure, no sound at all. So now all the butter and milk uh, and yogurt gushing down. So now, what happened now? What to do? And he understood. He understood that what he did is not proper. Mother Yasoda will scold him. That's for certain. So what he did is that he wanted to get out of the scene of the crime. But he didn't care, usually, to leave uh, no evidence. Uh, the person who did the crime will go around, right, of the place. But no, he's, he just went through the butter and the yogurt. Chug, 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 chug with his very tiny lotus feet. There was a sound. It says, Acharya says, chub, 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 chub. Now, Mother Yasoda, she thought also, uh-oh, I put Krishna aside. So what to do now? She went back and she cannot find Krishna. And then, however, when Krishna walked away from that storage of yogurt and butter, there were some imprints of Lord Krishna's lotus feet because he stepped on the butter. So when he went away from there, Mother Yasoda also, she went into the room and no one was there. If Krishna stayed there, then Mother Yasoda will not uh, go and chase Lord Krishna. But then she noticed that there is some imprints of small feet walking away from that room. And that was Lord Krishna. She was at the same time astonished. She was happy at the same time. Uh, at the same is mixed. <clears throat> Because, oh, this boy is really clever. Hmm. He must be thinking, I will not be able to figure out who is the one who did this. But based from the footprints, uh, that's Krishna. So Lord Krishna, he was hiding now. He was hiding. But then he went to the other place where the more yogurt and more butter uh, were being hidden or stored. And uh, this time, out of nowhere, Lord Krishna, he somehow, by his strength, he was able to turn over this wooden grinding mortar and he sat on top of it and pretending to be eaten, eating this uh, makan, which is already stale. Yogurt is, is from the day before. And out of nowhere, the monkeys came around. Where do these monkeys came from? Uh, 
these monkeys are also devotees of Lord Krishna. They're always with Lord Krishna. So this time, instead of eating, he gave them, he distributed them to, to all of these uh, monkeys around, around him. And then, somehow or other, Krishna, he was, while he was doing this, he was doing it just like a, a robber or a thief doing his mischief, but he's afraid. His eyes is, is looking uh, here and there and trying to see whether someone will come and uh, I don't want to be caught. He was thinking that Mother Yasoda may come any moment now. So while he was doing this, he was feeding the monkeys. Um, and then Mother Yasoda saw him. What is this? In Vrindavan, we chase the monkeys around. We chase the, the animals around to get away. But this time, what, what is this? He's entertaining the monkeys. So, Krishna started to run so fast. Because he knew that he did a big mischief. This will never be pardoned by Mother Yasoda. So he ran back and forth in different rooms of the house of Nanda Baba. Back and forth, back and forth. And Mother Yasoda, she found a stick to chastise Lord Krishna. Now, she wanted to punish Lord Krishna out of love because she doesn't want Lord Krishna to do this nonsense again. She doesn't want this to be repeated. So Lord Krishna will be running, 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 and sometimes he would look back if Mother Yasoda is behind. So he was running, running. He, he ran all over the place of Nanda Baba, and then finally he decided to go outside of the backyard of Nanda Baba. So he was running in the streets of Goko. Then he started to run inside the houses of the elderly gopis. And Mother Yasoda was there. Meanwhile, Mother Yasoda was drenched with perspiration. Perspiration. Before, by churning yogurt, a little bit uh, trickling of perspiration on her forehead, but this time her sari was disheveled, her comb is gone, her, her hair is <laughs> like my hair. <laughs> uh, her hair is like disheveled, is scattered everywhere, her head. So now, somehow or other, Krishna was caught by Mother Yasoda on his right hand. And it says that Krishna was crying profusely also. Uh, this time is real crying. Before it was not real, but this one is like real cry because he knew that he's going to be in big trouble. So all the kajal, usually in India, they put this uh, to the young children, this kajal, kajal, blank, black ointment. Sometimes they will put something here or put here or put there, right? Uh, all over the face. But usually they put around the eyes and they, their eyes become so beautiful. But then this kajal, was because it, it became mixed with the tears of Lord Krishna, then it's all over his face. Now he became more beautiful. We've seen children like that also. Huh? The kajal is being smeared all over. They look more cute, more adorable. But now, Mother Yasoda was saying to Krishna, you're friends of the monkeys, right? Why are you feeding the monkeys? But then by saying this, 
Mother Yasoda was thinking, Krishna may run away to the forest with the monkeys. You know, what's going to happen is that he may get harmed. There's a lot of wild animals there. And he may not come back home. So I better get some plan so that he will not go away for some time to teach him a lesson. So he found, she found a rope to tie Lord Krishna to the wooden grinding mortar. She's trying to do this. She tried to tie the boat ends and is always two fingers too short. Now while Krishna was running, going to different houses of the gopis, elderly gopis, all the elderly gopis also were watching and they were astonished. What is this? Mother Yasoda used to be always affectionate, always affectionate to uh, Kanai. Why is it this time she's running after him with a stick? So uh, they were surprised, but then when they saw Mother Yasoda trying to tie up Lord Krishna, he says, Yasoda Mai, don't do this. This is not good. But then, uh, no, no one can tell her not what to do. Now she asked for all the ropes in the house of Nanda Baba. And she also connected all the ropes. And then she's not able to uh, tie up Krishna when the two ends started to tie up. No. Now this time, the elderly gopis, they were laughing. Ah, see, you're trying to tie up your son, but you cannot do it. It's not possible. Who can tie up Lord Krishna? Na Mother Yasoda saw the whole universal form within the mouth. Actually, it's in the abdomen of, of Lord Krishna. And how can you tie up a person whose the whole universe is within him? It's not possible. So now she asked all the elderly gopis to please bring all your ropes to your house, from your houses and, and uh, I will gonna use, I'm going to use this to tie up Krishna. He says, uh, Prabhupada says, at least there is about a hundred feet of rope. And still, no, no. See, Lord Krishna is watching at the same time, Mother Yasoda. She is so determined to tie up Lord Krishna. And Krishna actually wanted to see whether Mother Yasoda will stop. He wanted to see whether Mother Yasoda will continue be determined to tie up Lord Krishna or give it up. But then, when Krishna saw the determination of Mother Yasoda, eventually, he gave in. He gave in. The Acharya says that this symbolizes the determination of the devotee to get, to attain the mercy of Lord Krishna. From the other hand is the determination and love of the devotee and at the other end, it is the mercy, kripa. Usually they will say, Maharaj, give me your mercy. Maharaj, give me your kripa. What's that mean? They want to have a big successful business or to have their children be brought up and they can get married in a good husband or a good wife. A real kripa means attaining love of God. So Krishna finally ended up being tied in the wooden grinding mortar. Now Balaram heard, Balaram heard that his brother was tied up in a wooden grinding mortar. And then he says, 
Who tied up? Who tied up my brother? Who tied up? Whoever tied up my brother, doesn't that person I am Sankar san? Hmm? I am very strong. I can, I can burn the whole universe. Because, you know, Sesanag also has some fire emanating from his mouth. Who is that person? And then, he's like a fiery snake. And then one of his friends says, It is Mother Yasoda. Oh, really? And he became like a scared mouse after that. <laughs> He became a scared mouse. Then he went, he went to uh, Balaram, went to see uh, Lord Krishna tied up. He says, I told you, you should stop this stealing business. Your habit of yours is not so good. Why do you have to do this? Oh, and Krishna is still crying. He's still crying. From the beginning till the end of this Leela, Krishna is crying. So, oh no, no, Mother Yasoda did this to me. Can you do something? Can you ask Mother Yasoda to untie me up from here? So he went to Mother Yasoda. Mai, please untie. Untie my, my, my brother. He looks like he's miserable, he's suffering, he's crying so much. Balarama says, don't you know he's the avatari? Don't you know that all the avatars are within him? Don't you know that he is Bhagavan himself? Uh, and then he says, I am also, I am also uh, Sesha, Ananta says. So then Mother Yasoda says, Oh, really? Hmm. Tell me, is there any house here who will accept another avatar? Maybe you should go there. And, and then Balarama says, Oh, oh, I'm going to be in trouble. Mother Yasoda, okay, if you uh, keep asking, I'm going to tie you up also. So Balaram now went back to. Uh, Krishna says, my dear brother, I cannot do anything. I told you, you should, you should stop this stealing habit of yours. This is no good. And both of them started to cry. Two of them now are crying. Now later on, um, there were these two big Yamal Arjun trees. They were cursed by Narad Muni, the sons of Kuvera the treasurer of the demigod, demigods, um, somehow they were cursed. Their curse is blessings in disguise. Because even though trees, trees, uh, they stand naked in spite of weather, any weather, heat or cold or wind or anything, scorching Son, but they got the benediction that they will see and have darshan of Lord Krishna. So, Lord Krishna, he was tied up in this wooden grinding mortar and he walked through these two trees. And meanwhile, the cowherd boyfriends of Lord Krishna, they were all watching what's going on. And he uprooted these two Yamal Arjuna trees and they also get back to their original form. They were asked to go back to the kingdom, to the heavenly planets, but then they said, no, we just want to be with you. We just want to serve you. Then Nanda Baba came and they, and they, they heard this big boom of these trees falling to the ground. And then Nanda Baba and the other cowherd men, they, they were surprised, everyone. Meanwhile, Mother Yasoda and the elderly gopis, they're inside their house of Nanda Baba, trying to console also, because Mother Yasoda, she thought that what she did was wrong. So, no one can untie 
Lord Krishna is being bound with a rope to the wooden grinding mortar. The Acharya says that the cowherd boyfriends could have attempted to do it, but they did not. Why? Because they were not in the same ras, the same mellow. Mother Yasoda is in the Vatsalya ras, so only a person also who is in the Vatsalya ras can untie. So that's why Nanda Baba did it. He is the one who untied this rope. It says also, I've heard uh, a lecture by His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami in 1992 in Siddha Mayapur. That Janani Bas Prabhu, he made a comment that ultimately it was the string or uh, what do you call it to tie up the women's hair a rope or a string is it or a cord what do you call it huh yeah that was Radharani's mother Yasoda asked or Radharani gave that small string to tie up her hair to Mother Yasoda to use. That was the last thing that was used to tie up Lord Krishna. That's why in the song by Satya Brata Muni, Namo Radhikayai Tvadiya Priyayai Namo Nantalilaya Devaya Tubhyam So in these pastimes, how come Radharani is there? Yeah. Somehow, it's only Mother Yasoda and Lord Krishna. Jananiba says he heard this from a um, disciple of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Thakur. And Tamal Krishna Maharaj says, yes, that could be. I'm just saying it like that. So, he was untied and then Krishna is still crying. Now Nanda Baba says, Oh, okay, now go to your mother. Go to your mother. But then, no, no, I don't want to go to mother. I just want to be with you. Then how are you going to eat? I'm going to be eating with you. Uh, who's going to put you to rest? You are going to put me to rest. No, 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 I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. He was, see, this is the mood now. It became more intense. The mood is so much, the relationship, even though he knows Mother Yasoda's love was so great that he doesn't want to immediately go back to Mother Yasoda. And then Mother Yas uh, Nanda Baba cannot persuade, cannot convince Lord Krishna to go back to Mother Yasoda. And Mother Yasoda also, she was weeping. What did I did? I did this wrong. So now Ruhini Mataji came. Again in the Vatsalya mood. Mother Ruhini came and says that, Oh, well, who's going to feed you? Come, come, I'll bring you to uh, uh, Yasoda Mai. No, I don't want to. Who's going to feed you? Oh, Nanda Baba will feed me. Who's going to put you to rest? Nanda Baba will put me to rest. Who's going to bait you? Nanda Baba will put me to rest. But Mother Yasoda wants you back. She may lose her life. And then, when Rohini Mataji says that, you may lose your mother if you don't go back. And immediately, He stopped crying. He was convinced by Rohini Mataji to go and see his mother. And then when they became together again, they embraced each other 
and love increases multifold so much more. So in this pastime, it's very interesting because we've learned many, many things. Um, that the Supreme Lord is Atmaram. He's not in need of anything, but at the same time, he is in need of love of his pure devotee. He doesn't need of anything. He is a supreme, but how is it that he also expanded himself into so many, so many living entities for his enjoyment ultimately? He is Aptakama. His mind is always fully satisfied. But then he became or remained unsatisfied because Mother Yasoda did not finish uh, feeding him up to his full satisfaction. He who is the purest of pure, untinged by any of the modes of material nature, even Satvagun, how can he become angry? He became angry here. No tinge of Rajagun or Tamagun. Still he became angry again to steer, to make more the intensity of love between the devotee and the Supreme Lord himself. He became fearful. He is Kala, Yamaraj. Fear personified, but he became fearful of Mother Yasoda. He cannot be caught by the speed of the minds of the yogis, but then he was caught by Mother Yasoda. And lastly, he who ties everyone up, including even the devas, with his divine rope of karma, became bound today by the rope of Mother Yasoda. So in the end, Krishna showed that he can be controlled only by his devotees. More, when you say Damodar, Damodar literally means whose belly has been bound. But more meaning of Damodar means whose personality has been bound by the love of his pure devotees. I will stop here now. Is there any other points or any comments? I'm sure Maharaj is still giving class over there. Maybe till 10 o'clock. <laughs> but we'll stop here. <laughs> we just don't have a place to take prasadam. <laughs> Maybe in the Krishna hall. Any other points? Any comments? Did you understood what I said or you did not understand? Only two things. Huh? You're in trance. Hare Krishna. Any other points wanted to include here, Maharaj? Yes, sir. Where is the mic? Give him the mic. No mic. The gopis' feelings of separation from Krishna, they look they are in anxiety. Yeah, that, that anxiety is also a kind of ecstasy. Yes, it says that the feelings of separation is more intense than the feeling. The, the feeling of separation from the beloved, between the lover and beloved, uh, is so intense that they, when they want to, when they meet each other, it's not the same. So this uh, anger is not the same as our anger, their anxiety or their sufferings is not the same as mundane. Uh, just like there are 12 rasas, hmm? there are five major and then there are seven minor. Haste, anger, laughter, uh, these are all, uh, and so on. Uh, this is relationship also with the Supreme Lord. Those pure devotees, they will do like that. So that's, 
the anxiety of the gopis heightened their love towards the Supreme Lord. And sometimes it is needed. It's like, if we are not in anxiety to be with Lord Krishna, if we are not crying for the day when we will be with Krishna, we will not attain Lord Krishna. So that feelings of sufferings of the devotees to see Krishna is another part of love. If we are not able to cry while chanting the holy name of the Lord, crying usually means is a cry of grief, but there is a cry of joy also. So these anxieties that devotees towards the Supreme Lord to see, it's part of their love. Because they will not be in anxiety if they don't have love towards the Supreme Lord. Our anxiety is that we cannot attain our material desires. Therefore, we suffer more. But this is different anxiety than the gopis or the inhabitants of Vrindavan towards the Supreme Lord. Any other points? So are you going, to, oh yes. It says that if you lit lamps and the rooftop, so many generations of your family members will be liberated. I was reading in the Hari Bhakti Bilas about offering of lamps. Anyone who help others to lit up lamp, they also get liberated. Even if you just, sometimes the lamp will just, you know, become a, uh, a little bit uh, windy, so you, you help covering not to, for that to be extinguished, you get so much benefit. We just don't know. But we do this every day automatically. So ultimately our goal is to attain love of God. So we're very fortunate. Kartik Mas, Diwali, all the festivals, tomorrow Govardhan Puja, and then uh, Soba Yatra. And then uh, Prabhupada's Disappearance Day, and then go past me. This month is so surcharged with bhakti. As Bhakti Brihat Bhagavat Maharaj gave class on the first day, a little bit of effort, a little bit of endeavor. But we do this every day for most of us. But for some of you, if you are visiting, then you take advantage, more hearing, more chanting, and Vaisnav Seva. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Yasodamai ki, Damodar ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Hare Krishna.